Can't get enough of Kelly and Rumya? We're now on YouTube for you to indulge in highlights from our show. The Secret World of Sound is a three-part special from The Nature of Things. Premiering February 15th, this uses new technology to put sound at center stage, the way we kind of like that, I will say, and tell the untold story of animals' lives using sound. We have our guest joining us today, Dougal Maudsley, writer and executive producer for Secret World of Sound on the program and joins us here on Kelly and Ramya. Thanks for being with us. Boy, are we excited for this conversation. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. Me too. Well, let's talk a little bit about the series, the three parts. Um, Google, tell us first about the special in the sense of, describe it to us, how this will be carried off and what inspired it? Well, it's kind of unique because normally yeah. natural history programs that focus on animals really focus on the pictures, right? We're used yes. to seeing those beautiful images and we've got those too. But in this series, we decided to put sound first and really look at animal behavior through sound and the way they use sound to hunt, to survive, to survive childhood, to find a mate, to see off a rival. So all of those kind of things are going to be explored across the three um, episodes. And I think what inspired it really was just the idea that, you know, we've looked at animals in so many different ways, but has anybody really dug into sound? And the answer is no, not really, not in this degree. And we also have this technology at our hands that allows us to get inside that world of animal sound in a way that we haven't in the past. Yeah, well, we're so excited as blind people. We always heard for all of our lives, oh, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. And, you know, hey, put 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 the pictures out there, show that it says so much. And we've always said, yeah, but what about the sound that tells us so much? We have a trailer. Let's let's before we get on with further questions, Rum has a few things to ask you off the hop here when we come out of this. But let's take a listen to a, a view of a trailer for the show. Nature is full of sound. Now we're getting a glimpse inside this hidden world. To survive, some baby animals use sound even before their birth. Others wield it to defeat their rivals or compete with their siblings in a struggle for food. <laughs> Using the latest audio technology, we enter this secret world to reveal how baby animals rely on sound to stay alive when the odds are stacked against them. Wow, that was great. That was so good. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm uh, like loving this because of course it's sound first. <laughs> Right, and so it, it, first yep. of all, it evokes like a lot of feeling and emotion. I think to hear some mm -hmm. of these sounds, and especially in this compilation, the way that we did in the trailer, um, and it's not usual, right, to have sound as kind of center stage in a TV series like this. So, why did you feel like this was a really appropriate or interesting, uh, engaging way to do this, but on TV? Yeah, yeah, it seems counterintuitive, doesn't mm. it? But actually, you know, the the fact that we haven't looked at sound and the way that uh, animals use it before in such a, a deep way, and, and when we started digging into it, we realized like, wow, so baby caiman, the, these little crocodiles communicate with each other before they even hatch in order to hatch at the same time to increase their survival. Flamingos, their voices are like a vocal fingerprint so that when mom and dad leave and have to leave their baby in the daycare with thousands of other baby flamingos, they can come back and they can find their baby because they all looked identical. Um, you know, it was like thing after thing that made us realize, wow, there's stuff about these animals we don't know. And then secondly, by looking at those stories, we realized they were really dramatic stories. When you actually realize, hey, this sound means this, then you understand the kind of drama that's, that's playing out there. And so every one of our stories in the series, some way by actually getting inside that secret world, by being able to hear those sounds, 
you realize, oh, this is going on. Wow, tremendous drama. And uh, it's fascinating. And it's a new way of looking at animals. Wow. I, I, I get caught listening, and I say just settling back and listening to Love Nature because a lot of the shows, I just love that sound, the surround sound yeah. in my system and everything like that. Yeah. But as you talked about here, we're going to learn about these sounds, the communication sounds. But capturing it is where I'm so curious, and you guys are using mm. groundbreaking technology. Can we get, and we've heard some, can you talk a little bit about that, how you guys captured, how, what equipment maybe, was there anything particularly that an audience member that us, that we can grab onto and say, oh my gosh, because this is some yeah. Herculean feat. <laughs> well, it certainly took a lot of effort and a lot of time in the field. One of the pieces of equipment we use is called a vibrometer. And basically what it is is a laser beam that picks up vibrations uh, on the surface of something. And it's used in industry uh, to test a plane, to make sure that the plane's not shaking too much and a wing might fall off or mm -hmm. to find a rattle in a car or something like that. And so what we decided to do was use it because what we discovered talking to scientists is there are 200,000 species out there that communicate in ways that we can't even hear. And if you look at all the sound that's out there in the animal kingdom, there's more sound that we can't hear than we can. Yeah. So by using the vibrometer, we were able to listen to, for example, there it is, the tiny tree hopper. Um, and that's the vibrometer on the table there. We basically went out to use that machine so we could pick up the sound of these tree hoppers. And the sounds are amazing. Like one sounds, that one sounds like a hen clucking. Mm. Um, and what we also discovered was that the male tree hopper and the female tree hopper sing a duet to each other so they can find each other on a plant. The male sings, the oh. female answers, the male goes in search of her. And uh, and he's got a time limit because there's probably other males out there are also tuning into these songs. But by using that vibrometer, we were able to hear those sounds and otherwise we wouldn't have been able to. This That's is amazing. so interesting. Oh, oh, oh. Are there um, sounds that you're capturing? Like we heard some of the, the effects of like the waterways and other things like that, right? To give us different understanding of atmosphere of where these animals are as well. Was there anything particularly interesting about capturing sound that isn't necessarily coming from an, from an animal directly? Um, well, we, we actually had to um, get under the water. Mm -hmm. And what we discovered was that under the water, there are an amazing set of sounds. Like for human beings, we don't think of that. We just think of it almost as being this silent realm. Right. But actually, fish are making noises. Uh, animals are chewing away on coral reefs. Um, claws are snapping. Beaks are going. There's a lot happening under there. And by using a hydrophone, we were able to pick up that sound. Um, and we were able to find out that the clownfish, you know, Saving Nemo, the clownfish actually <laughs> uses that sound of a healthy reef to find its way back to the reef oh, after wow. having spent time away uh, growing up and, and, and getting to a size. It chooses where it's going to live based on the sound of the reef. The louder the sound, the healthier the reef, that's how the wow, animal chooses where it's sense. going to be. Oh my gosh. So for wow. me, that was a bit of a mind blower. I had no idea that, you know, under the water, there was all this noise going on and that that noise was actually pretty vital. Yeah. Wow, what a lot of traffic. How did you guys in the editing process or where would this begin, filter out what you didn't need? I mean, you're using equipment to get sounds that we can't hear. Obviously, you're grabbing other things you don't want. Yeah, so, so true. You know, we actually had, we did this as a co-production with uh, Humblebee Films in Bristol, which is the heart of natural uh, history filmmaking in the world. And they're extremely good at all this sort of stuff. We captured thousands of hours of sound, thousands and thousands. We had recorders going all over the place when we, we filmed the elk in uh, Waterton Lakes National Park in Alberta. We had um, uh, sound recorders that we attached trees to try to pick up sound because we couldn't get very close to the elk. Mm. So Humblebee had the task of, of sifting through all of these hours and hours and hours of material, searching for you know the bugle of the elk or the mm. squeaking sound of a fish or the sound that you saw on the trailer of the caimans you know, squeaking right. to each other in the eggs. And then that sound had to be connected up to the pictures that had been shot by a whole other group of, of talented cameramen. So that process took place over about a year and a half of constantly tracking, constantly adding sound to the pictures as the, the directors and the teams and the edit suites cut them, 
the track layers would put those sounds together. And you'll see when you watch the film, it's quite amazing. There's sound in the foreground, there's sound in the, you know, where the main action is. And if you keep your eye on the background, you'll see that there's all sounds is all connected at all of the different levels. So you're really just immersed in this natural right. history experience, this natural sound experience, which is, you know, really quite um, amazing, I think. Oh, it sounds amazing. I mean, the trailer alone gave us insight on just the the different dynamics, the relationships, the the stages of life for these different animals. And first of all, how many animals are being featured here? It's unbelievable uh, having to curate this and take it down to only a three part series. It's it's wild yeah. to me that you know that in itself is uh, such a project. But I'm very curious about. How much of the making of this was for you um, learning and researching as you go versus things that are already out there that you're just trying to communicate to us this way through sound and in this series? You know, it's a bit of everything because scientists are always out there discovering new things. And so we were keeping an eye on that. So, for example, the plain fitman shipman, which is a fish that sings uh, off the west coast of Canada and the United States, well, there had been research done about the plain fitman shipman. We knew uh, a lot about its behavior, but it hadn't been featured before because it's a really oh. difficult fish to, to film. It does a lot of its activity at night. Okay. So part of the challenge for us was, that's an amazing story about sound. We haven't seen or heard that story before. How do we capture it? Um, right. And so we had to do that. There were other cases where we uncovered uh, new science as we went. Uh, the Great Grey Owl, which uh, we filmed in Alberta, uh, uses amazing hearing to figure out where its prey is. But we never understood how it overcame the way that snow changes sound. Because you know that so yes. dampens sound. Oh, yes. Also it also bends it, right? Um, it changes where it's coming from. And we all know that quiet sound on a snowy day. So the scientists that we work with use the acoustic camera, another piece of cool technology, to visualize where the sound was. And they realized it was, the, the vole was over here, but the sound was coming out way over here, but you know, a meter and a half away. And that the great gray owl was actually uh, reducing the impact that the snow had on sound by getting over top of its uh, prey where the sound was least affected by the snow. And so that was new, brand new science just uncovered. And mm. that features in our story about the great, great owl, which is, of course, also an extremely beautiful uh, story, all shot in the winter. But it was that oh, yeah. science that allowed us to realize, oh, this is what's going on. This is how it's using its hearing. This is how it gets its prey. So how many of those instances would you say happen in this series, or maybe we don't even get to see it left on the cutting room floor, of scientific discoveries were found, found, things that you guys were doing that maybe others who would have loved to, scientists, doctors, but maybe not necessarily had the funding or whatever reason to investigate, how many of those discoveries do you, do you feel you guys literally had? I think we did pretty well. I mean, the other big one for us was the way that uh, sound is being used now um, to help recover and regenerate reefs. And uh, we featured the Australia. And, you know, if we hadn't been there to do that story, you know, would that story have been told by other people? Maybe it would. But we've pretty put a lot of energy into, you know, the mechanism that helps the clownfish find its way back to the reef is the same mechanism that's being used by these scientists to draw other fish to the reef and fish on a reef help those reefs regenerate and grow again. Yes. So, you know, it's 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 stuff like that that I think we were able to, you know, uh, give an opportunity to be heard literally and and I think makes a big difference. It's not like we were breaking science, you know, from episode to episode to episode, we weren't, but we were actually revealing the way that animals behave by looking in a different way at them, not just at what you could see, but as you appreciate, what you could hear. And it's oh, that yeah. world that gave us this whole new view on, on what was going on that we might not have realized before. Do you have any um, particular dynamic or, or maybe just the sound itself, but uh, some dynamic that you that sticks with you that kind of makes you feel like oh this was so worth it to capture this in sound for me it was hearing in the trailer about the the siblings i can't remember yeah, the exact fighting each other. yes yeah, I think so totally adorable. Adorable. Come out. yeah. we got to come out in <laughs> well, forces the cayman yeah 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 well uh, the meerkats are quite amazing um i mean first of all i was totally taken by that midshipman this this fish 
this rather un un unattractive looking fish that that makes this amazing deep booming sound this yeah. this kind of note but also the meerkats the way that they actually have a whole series of different sounds that they make to alert each other this sound is there's a predator in the air this sound is there's a predator on the ground this sound is oh my. there's a snake on the ground like to me that was mind-boggling that these animals could develop and 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 communicate to each other this is what that means this is what this means as a way of staying safe in a very dangerous environment in the yeah. kalahari desert in, in botswana so that was great that was that was an eye opener or an ear opener for me for sure wow phenomenal well first of all Thank you guys all for putting this together. This I am looking wicked. so forward to it. Thanks for making time to come on our show today. And hopefully we we stir up a lot of interest, at least from those of us who rely so much on hearing, but also the introduction of taking a chance, listening to something like this instead of walking so much with people's eyes. Let your ears do a little of the, the walking. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. That was uh, Dukult Monsley writer and executive producer of The Secret World of Sound. This is from The Nature of Things, and it premieres on CBC Television on February 15th. You can also find it on CBC Gen. Thanks for watching. You can catch Kelly and Rumya weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on AMI.